Hi there, I'm Miriam and welcome to Miriam's Manor. If this is your first time joining me today, welcome. The content that I create is mostly about Christmas and Christmas villaging, but I also do home decor as well as gardening. Everything is separated out into playlists, which will make it easier for you to find the type of video you are looking for. For those of you who are used to hanging out with me, welcome back today, family, you guys. I have completed part four of my Christmas Village Park scene and I am beyond excited to share this with you guys because it came out exactly the way it was in my head. It came out and it is completely fulfilling to have this all wrapped up and just to be able to sit back, look at it and enjoy it. So before I do that, I want to let you guys know that I've not laid any of the snow yet in this park scene because I never lay any of the snow in my village until I am ready to set the entire thing up and the entire village is laid, then I lay my snow. So that will be the last thing that goes on. But I also want to take just one quick minute to address some comments that I've actually received. Some of them have been really legitimate questions. Some of them have been a little nasty. Um, but some of you have said like, I don't get your village. You've got flowers and grass and snow at the same time. Well, let me explain. I live in Arizona. We have very mild winters here. So we, all of our gardens actually thrive more in the winter time than they do during our summers. All of my flowers, trees and grass stay green and colorful all year round. So if you drive about an hour north of where I live now, same thing, it's very green up north, except they actually get little light dustings of snow. So the flowers will still be colorful, the grass will still be green as well as the trees, but you will also see snow on the ground at the exact same time. So I have created my village to represent the state that I live in. And I know that might be a little bit different for those of you who live in colder climates where it snows heavily or it gets so cold that everything just turns brown or dies out during the winter months. But that is not our reality here in Arizona. So I just wanted to clear that up. I say all that to say this, my village is still a representation of what I wanna create in my mind. It's something that I get to dream up and I get to create. Just as you can dream up your village and create yours, each of us needs our space to do and create what brings us joy and what we want to have the final product look like. So I just wanna say that for those of you out there who have questioned whether you should add certain things in your village, and I know that you have because you've emailed me and commented me, and my advice is still always the same. If it makes you happy, do it. If it brings you joy, do it. If it is something that you are creating and you feel like it's going to add an element to your village that you just cannot do without, do it. Even if it doesn't make sense in the overall scheme of things of the climate of where you're at. Villaging is about creating something in your mind and bringing it to life that you are happy with. So I encourage each and every one of you to do the same while you are putting together your Christmas villages. But I am so excited to share with you guys this final project that I just completed. I am absolutely in love with it. So check it out and let me know what you think. I am beginning today by making the waterfall for my lake. I am using this moss mat from Lemax as a guide to measure the length for my waterfall. You guys, I could not find a tape measure this morning, so I am just using products that I have around me to act as a guide for my length and my width. So the product that I am using to make the waterfall is called Water Effects by Woodland Scenics. As you can see, I am not concerned if the product goes on perfectly in straight lines because I am going to be creating my own lines and ridges in this product in a minute anyway. I am only concerned about getting the length and the width accurate for what I need. So now that I have it all applied, I am going to take three toothpicks and I make sure there is a small gap between each of the toothpicks and I make straight lines going up and down the entire surface. And I keep repeating this process until I like the finished look. I like to make sure there are plenty of ridges in the surface. 
So here's a few extra tip for you guys if you are just beginning to make waterfalls. Make sure that you make your waterfall one inch longer and wider than what you actually need to account for shrinkage when the product is drying. It is so much easier to cut excess away than it is to add it after the fact. And also I've made dozens of waterfalls over these past like six years and I find at this point making them on a glass surface makes for the easiest removal. I have tried um, wax paper, cardboard, plastic, um, saran wrap, all sorts of things and glass honestly works the best. I just get my fingernail underneath it and begin to peel it up slowly and it works perfectly. So I would highly recommend just taking a glass dinner plate or a mirror, something that you have with a glass surface and making your waterfall on that. I have pre-cut my moss mat from Limax and I have laid out the pattern I wanted to be in for my pathways. I will go ahead and glue these down, making sure to press the joints closely together so it looks like one seamless walk path all the way around. Next, I am setting my rock lights in place. I showed how to make these in September's live stream for members. So before I glue them in place, I am checking to make sure the light is shining where I want it to. So I wanted to partially hit the waterfall where the waterfall is going to come down here, as well as the island. So I feel like I just need to tilt it just a bit and I want it to cast like right there. So now that I know where I want it to be, I'm going to go ahead and grab my Sharpie marker, draw a circle so that I know where I need to cut the hole with my hot knife. Because there is plaster covering the styrofoam in this area, I'm going to take a knife and cut through the plaster, remove it, and then I will use my hot knife to cut the hole. I am running my light up through the bottom of the hole first, that way my cords will always remain hidden. Then I will place my rock on top of it and everything went as planned so I'm going to go ahead and glue this in place. Now I am using this moss mat that I purchased at Michael's to act as my grass and I ended up using two and a half bags of this. Now I am going to cut this moss mat to size within and around my pathways but I am also leaving a gap on the sides of the pathways and I'll show you why in a minute and I just used regular Elmer's white glue to adhere it. Okay, so here is a look of how I am doing so far. So as you can see, when I put down the moss mat, I did not go all the way to the edge because I did not want the hard line of the moss mat. So what I do is just take it a little bit back and then get the same color and the same exact moss, but just in loose moss. And then I will glue it to the end. That way it has a more natural finish there on the end. And so that's what I have done along this walk path here and then along this side too. So I'm going to just continue to cover the rest of this with some moss mat and then glue down the loose moss on the sides. So my grass is all set, but you guys, I have skipped an entire part in this whole process. So in my zeal to get started, I did not carve and paint the sides of this platform. Since it is not too late to do so, I am going to go ahead and do that now before I go any further. So to do that, I am going to use my sculpting tool from Hotwire Foam Factory to carve out some super quick ridges on the sides of this so I can go ahead and keep going. It is time to paint the sides and I already have a cup with a little water in it and I am adding some black paint to it, mixing it up well to begin with my black wash. I am applying a generous amount of this to make sure that all of the white little cracks and crevices are completely saturated. Okay, so now I'm just adding a little bit of white paint to my existing black wash to make my first layer of gray. Okay, so I've got that nice dark gray color there. So I'm going to take off all the excess paint on my brush 
and then I am just going to swipe gently back and forth across the front of this piece. Now I will attach my fence and the fence I am using is called the canal fence from Lemax and I have added a thin line of hot glue to the bottom and attaching it to the furthest edge of the platform and I'm just going to continue the same process all the way around. So now that my fence border is on, I am going to glue down my little side strip piece to go along here. I am also going to get a little bit of this road, um, this pathway, and put it along the openings here. And then just finish off all the detail work that's on the inside of this that needs to be done and fill in all these white spots. All right, so now it is time to attach my waterfall. Before I permanently seal it, I always do a dry run with it first to make sure that my width and my length work for what I want. In this case, it is about a half an inch too wide, so I'm peeling off the excess to match the width of the opening at the top. You guys, do not be afraid to manhandle your waterfalls. They are pretty durable when they're made out of this water effects product, and they're easy to get them to the shape that you want. So now that I have the width that I want, I am cutting off the excess and length that I do not need, and I'm doing another dry run. So while I set this in place, I decided that I don't want the water to flow completely over in one block. So I am separating the water strands so they can flow around the rocks that I have set in place right underneath where the waterfall is. Now that I have everything set the way that I want, it is time to attach it. And to attach the waterfall, I'm going to use the same product that I used to make the waterfall. I'm putting a small line right at the edge and pressing it down in place. I hold it there for about 30 to 60 seconds um, in order to just hold it in place. But over the course of the next 24 hours, it will completely adhere to the resin and dry and harden. So to add a little shape to the waterfall, I am placing a small dot of water effects down below and curving the piece at the bottom to attach it. And I'm going to do this for each individual strand of water until they're all attached. This is the extra piece that I cut off and I have a little bit of a gap on this side and I want this piece to run up this way. So I'm gonna start at the bottom first on that one. Ooh, that squirted out a lot. And I'm going to put that there. And rather than try to attach it at the base with the rest of them, I'm just going to attach it onto this little piece here. Okay, so I put it actually on the waterfall, not connecting it down here with the others, but I am just going to put this right on top of the other waterfall piece. It's going to dry just fine. And that way my water looks like it's pouring over. It's 
got a nice little bow to it. Now that everything is set in place, I am taking more of the Water Effects product to make some ripples down at the bottom. I'm going to place it all around where the water hits at the base as well as where the water pours over on the top. Now I am taking a small stiff brush and pressing into the water effects to make ripples. And all of this will dry clear in about 36 to 48 hours.
So I hope you guys really enjoyed this last part of the tutorial. I hope that all of the information provided in this four part series has helped you and answered some questions and things that you might want to create for your village. So uh, one other thing that I definitely need to mention is you guys, if you are not aware, I am hosting a 2022 Christmas Village contest. We have Lee Max, eHobbyTools.com, and Hotwire Foam Factory are all sponsors. They have all provided gifts for the first place winners for the three different categories of our contest. I will be posting a video in the very near future that is just going to go over the rules for that contest again. But if you wanna go ahead and see the original video that I posted about it, it was the Happy Christmas in July title. I will put that video link in the description box of this video. I also will put the video link of my original inspiration trip to Tacoma, Washington for this park scene. For those of you who want to see that, video in full who haven't seen it already. I will also link that in the description box of this video. So if you haven't done so already, please give me a big thumbs up for this video. I greatly appreciate it. Also, please subscribe to the channel. You can also become a member of my channel by clicking on the link in the description box of this video, clicking that join tab, and then entering at the level that you feel comfortable with. If you guys have any questions for me, as always, leave me a line in the comment section. I will get back with you. And until I see you again, stay safe. God bless you. And I will see you soon. Bye.